Dudes and dudettes. Okay. Woo. Did I get a beating? A couple of strongly worded emails and stuff. Guys telling me. Uh, we just want to tell you a couple of things. You are shaking in your video. A. B. How can you talk about articulation in a loco and some stuff on an ESU decoder and not show us? So I just took the shots and here I am, here I am. I'll try and explain best I can. Before we go and I go show you what this is all about. Um, you must understand that a steam loco, when it stands stationary, there's a lot of condensation. So water actually accumulates in the pistons, which is not good for it. So when they move out the station normally, they, the drain cocks, they open the drain cocks and the loco will actually move, but there will be no chuff. And it will be a lot of steam coming out and stuff like that. And then it will start chuffing. All right. So now this feature can be done with cylinder smoke. You can write it onto the decoder. There's no cylinder smoke on this thing. So don't worry about that now. I just want to show you for the reason of being a little bit more realistic. The coasting out the station and then when the actual chuff start. You will see that there's a slight little change on the smoke out the chimney. All right, so let's start there. Let's, let me just get this out the way before we go further. All right, so we have sound, we have smoke, So he's waiting for passengers or freight or whatever. He's going to pull out the station now. I've assigned the coast mode to the F4 button, which I will show you on my computer a bit later. All right. So F4 is now on, which means we are going to coast out the station now, which looks like this. See how it blows the smoke out the chimney more? See it's moving? You hear the rod clank? You can go to any speed you want and then as soon as you release F4 this will happen. And your chimney will chop and all that stuff. Right. Okay. So, let me just move this up a bit. You see, I've got a Magafta here now. So you can see the smoke when she goes back. Um, I'm going to do the same thing now, run it in F4, let it tank a bit and then let it go. Okay, so we got that out the way. Now, a lot of guys also asked me, 
What the hell is articulation? All right, now let me show you. I'm going to make this slightly out like that. A garret, some of the mallets that's not compounded, and obviously like a big boy and stuff like that, is basically two locomotives on one chassis. All right? So you have a set of drivers here with two cylinders. And you have a set of drivers there with two cylinders. So essentially two locomotives on one frame. Only difference being you've only got one exhaust. So now what happens is, walk with me, we're going to go to the computer now. It will stumble over each other there for lack of a better word. Um, okay. All right, let's just get rid of that. Now, the new sound files. You get a dual channel sound file. Now, if you go there, I have written my sound onto F8, which is that one. And you go, this is at function mapping, okay? And you have your different sound slots there now. You see there's two of them, because it's a dual channel sound file. Then you tick sound slot 2. That will activate it. You write the decoder data. Now you will have both sound files um, activated and open. All right. This is, as, as I said, at function map mapping. Then you go to your sound settings. All right. So you go there to your sound settings. You click on it. Why is it? Okay. Now here, you have all your steam chuff distances. Don't, don't bugger around with that. What you do is you enable secondary trigger. Now, you see that reduce secondary trigger distance by. There, you can go up to one second, which is hell of a far away. Um, I'm only using 0.02 of a second on that specific garret. All right. That gives you the double chuff when it pulls out. It also gives you the synchronization at a certain speed step where it will chuff in unison. You must remember, with it being like that, when it pulls off, sometimes you have one set of drivers maybe wheel spinning or not the same amount of traction as the rear set. So there will always be that... Um, it being out of synchronization, that it stumbles. Okay, so, right, you enable secondary trigger, you choose your distance, test the loco, rewrite the decoder at the top there, whoop, write the thing in, and test, and away you go. Now, what is nice about this, if you go here to sound settings, and this is why I use ESU, this is so easy to do, and it's brutal. Okay, I'm on an old laptop, so the thing is hell of a slow. Your sound files here. Let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to make it slightly smaller. So that you can see what I'm on about. If I go there now. To sound slot 1. And I tick it. It gives you a graph of exactly. Let's make it smaller. 20% should do it. Okay, there's a lot of stuff written in there now, but you, you get the basic idea. Every one of these resembles a certain step in the whole sound file. So, there you're standing, all right? Once you start running it, it will go to acceleration, which is the top five blocks, six blocks there. This is intermediate acceleration. So, it steps over, and this is drive in the middle here. And then it goes back to deceleration at the bottom here where the whole smoke file changes. All right, on the side here, you can now, on every single property, let's go to that acceleration one there. Now, 
on every one there, you will have a whole lot of features on the side here. It will show you like that what the file looks like. So that's everything inside that file. You go to overview. We are slightly too small um, for me to collect that now. Let's take another one. Okay, there, there we go. See, I'm working on a without a mouse here. Why? Because people steal your stuff. Okay, so you see there, you can you can actually do the volume, everything for that specific block. All right. Now there's your ESU smoke exhaust. You can set the fan speed. You can set the temperature. Everything. For that one little block out of this whole thing. Now you can imagine how long it takes you to write a complete proper smoke file into this. Because you miss one little block and you will have a very, very distinct gap in your smoke. It will show you immediately that there is a problem. Now you can also now go to the secondary channel. The second um of the two sound files that's in there and also change it there um, that and that will even increase your amount of smoke and the double chuffs will be a double chuff at the chimney which I didn't really like so I left that out I wrote this one and I left the second one standard all right so I hope you know what I'm on about um, uh, that's how you do that's what I mean by the articulation, and that's how you actually do it um, to get that secondary, the, the second chuff behind the first one. So I hope now you know what articulation is, and you know what I mean by the, the um, coasting out of the station. Now let me show you that. It is called, there's an F4, it's shift mode 2. Coast. You see it's got a little star next to it. All right, so that's how you write that in. I wrote mine on F4. So you just go there on that one to shift mode 2, tick it on the draw bar, on the draw down there, and then this side you just go there, go down, select coast, and away you go. Yeah, see, so it's not that difficult um, uh, please dudes go check out ESU's website go to the retail sound files there's a lot of new ones in there there's a lot of stuff that's not been there before a lot of effort and a lot of beautiful files um, so much so that I'm going to rewrite all the South African stuff this baby is next um and get the sound on them perfect. Uh, so I hope that clears stuff up a bit. All right. Okay, so good. I'm going to go home. You Oaks must have a hell of a nice weekend. Thanks for the subscriptions this week. We're pushing 900, eh? We only need 100 more, and we're famous. Then it's like Demi Moore and... Um, Jack Nichols and stuff like that, Oaks like that. Yes. Um, so, all right, we'll speak later. Okay, good to see